We're still doing Clinton emails. Um, I'll come back to you, Abigail. Go ahead, Arshan. So, um, uh, Judicial Watch re released 10 additional pages of emails uh, this morning. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> In one of them, it documents that uh, Secretary Clinton's, former Secretary Clinton's then Chief of Staff Cheryl Mills was advised of a, uh, a FOIA request uh, in which the Citizens for Responsibility and Ethics in Washington had sought, quote, records sufficient to show the number of email accounts of or associated with Secretary Hillary Rodham Clinton and the extent to which those email accounts are identifiable of or associated with Secretary Clinton. Um, that the email that um, Chief of Staff, then Chief of Staff uh, Mills received was sent on December the 11th, 2012. And according to the emails released, I believe she acknowledged it and said thanks in, in response. So if she was aware, as she was, because she was notified of this FOIA request asking about the different email accounts that were associated with Secretary Clinton at the time. Why did the department subsequently tell the Citizens for Responsibility and Ethics in Washington uh, that there were no, no responsive records? Because mm -hmm. she knew, because she, we know for a fact, emailed with Secretary Clinton on her private account. So, and we also know that she, as a lawyer, is the person who helped make the determinations on which of the emails on the private server constituted federal records and should therefore be turned over to the archives, many of, well, many of which have now been made public. So why, if she knew in December of 2012 <clears throat> that there were requests for clarity on how many accounts Secretary Clinton had, did the State Department not forthrightly and honestly answer that request rather than just saying there were no responsive records? Okay. A lot there. So I'm going to give you a, a fulsome response mm -hmm. on that. In 2012, Citizens for Responsibility and Ethics in Washington, known by the acronym CREW, sent FOIA requests to a number of agencies seeking information about email use by agency heads. This FOIA request, as it relates to the State Department, has been covered extensively in the press and reviewed previously by State's Inspector General. The documents released today show what the OIG already reported in January 2016 that former Secretary Clinton's Chief of Staff, Cheryl Mills, was informed of the request at the time it was received and subsequently tasked staff to follow up. The OIG report also found no evidence that SES, L, and IPS staff involved in responding to requests for information, searching for records, or drafting the response had knowledge of the Secretary's email use. Ms. Uh, Mills has testified about this topic previously. Uh, that testimony is publicly available. I can't speculate um, what may or have m may not been known about that email use, what, um, but I, I would note that the January IG report found no evidence that any senior State Department officials who exchanged emails with the Secretary reviewed the search results or approved the response to crew. Nothing in these documents alters the facts as found by the IG. So it's in the IG report. You know, I, I, I get that it was covered in the IG report. What I don't understand, though, I mean, it, the IG report also concluded that the response that there were no responsive records was, quote, inaccurate and incomplete. Mm -hmm. And my question goes to why someone who was aware of that specific FOIA request, who was aware of the specific uh, request for information regarding how many emails, email accounts the Secretary had or were associated with her, uh, would not have disclosed to SES, L, the FOIA people, or anybody else 
the fact of the private server so that federal records could, in fact, be made available in response to the FOIA request. So I think what you're asking about is, is why wasn't that FOIA request amended? No, I'm not asking that. I'm asking why the person, a person who was both in a position to know about the FOIA request and who uh, was well aware and frequently corresponded with former Secretary Clinton on her private account did not make the existence of that account available and known to the people whose legal responsibility it was to respond honestly, accurately, and completely to a FOIA request. That's my question. Not why wasn't it amended, why wasn't it correctly responded to in the first place? Yeah, it's, it's a good question. I don't have an answer for you. Um, as I note, you know, we have, the IG found no evidence that any senior department official uh, reviewed the search results or approved the response to crew. Um, I, I have no process chart, flow chart on, on how that FOIA request was responded to, but it was um, taken a look at. The IG reported this in January 2016 and did note that result. Can I also ask back on the hiring? Yeah, I want to go to Abigail too, unless unless we answered. I okay. mean, essentially that. I, I was just going to say, I, I guess it just stands out that that seems like a pretty broad request. So it seems like something you would flag if the response was no records in response to it. It seems like something that a FOIA person would note is unusual or that there might be an issue or a problem there. Um, again, I can't speak to process. I would note, you know, that this was extensively covered, though, in, in the January 2016 IG report. Go ahead, Nick. But, did, but that didn't ultimately... Um, put any blame on Cheryl Mills, did it, that IG report? I'd, re I'd refer you to the IG it report really looks itself. Like she was I'm, not yeah, I'm not going to characterize the IG report. They would speak for themselves. Go ahead, Nick. Um, you mentioned the 